Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Yeah, you can tell not that it feels about this. Movie, um. This as a whole is my. As a whole, I remember I said that Mission Impossible Rogue Ghost Pro call and Mission Impossible 2 were my least favorite Mission Impossible 1. Well, that all changed after I revisited Rogue Nation. I decided that Mission Impossible Ghost Pro call and Rogue Nation are my least favorite Mission Impossible movies. My top two. My top three is Mission Impossible 2. Anyway, let's talk about the story. You want to hear about the story, don't you? Oh, of course you do. So, once again, the team and Ethan Hunt must go rogue again after the IMF, IFM, FFI, the Mission Impossible Corporation gets shut down by the government. Also, uh, as a help of by Alec Ball and also Alec Ball's character, who is the head of the CIA. So him and his team GLA six months later, uh, he's not still on the run, and he recruits all his as many teams he can to get them back on his uh, to get them on his as many teams on his he as many teams as he can, which are only two. So this is the smallest that the team dynamics has been. Uh, so this has less Team Dynamics than any Mission Impossible film ever made. So, it's really not about the Team Dynamics as, like, Ghost Pro Call tried to make it to be, but failed miserably at it. What I do like about Ghost Pro Call, it tried the hardest to make it about the Team Dynamics, but couldn't quite know what to do with it. This film decides to just play it safe and know this decides this is decides okay, let's have the team roll, but we'll place the safest way possible by having Tom Cruise front and center of the main story. And focus not really on the team or the uh um we'll have a and we'll have the first half of the film be what fans, what the fans of the Mission Impossible show want the movie to be like, but we'll have the second and third half uh, completely different. Just having a cliche Tom Cruise move, and people want to in the Mission Impossible fans, unless unless they have true Mission Impossible fans and ones with brains, won't be smart enough to know the difference when they're being played. Unfortunately, I am, and I know that I'm just being played. So, Ethan and Benji decide to stick together after Benji lectures Ethan and talks down to Ethan. And uh, these two guys, Luther and uh, Hawkeye, uh, go to bring Ethan in alive, while the other one wants to bring Ethan uh, in, uh, dead in, in life, dead or alive. Because Alvon says, if if he wants to die, that's his choice. <laughs> he wants to be in dead, that's his choice. Uh, not mine. He, so Alvon doesn't really care if he bring gets bringing alive or dead. So it's more likely giving out Ethan stubborn, um, pretty stubborn. He is going to be dead. Uh, and also he falls in love with his babe, which is. Glorified ass in a yellow dress. She's revealed to be a dull ancient on the against the syndicate and working for her British, uh, who who's really British and telling went undercover as to work for the syndicate for two years now. And um, yeah, so. She ends up backstabbing Ethan T after Ethan almost drowned to death. And she saved him. She ends up backstabbing and stealing the disc. Turns out Benji made a copy. And also turns out after that after that chasing when Jesus was trying to get 
this from her back. He was hoping that she would take the desk. Wow. <laughs> so, why the hell did you chase after a moron? <laughs> Seriously, you wasted all my time for that? <laughs> this is really old, that you were 10 steps ahead of everyone, including the girl that backs up you and sold the disc? And turns out he knew about Benji making the, uh, the, the double, co the, uh, the, uh, the, um, copy of a, uh, of a desk. Even though he's clearly surprised that Benji made a copy of the desk. And knew, uh, but at the same time, knew that Benji was going to do that. Because that was all part of his elaborate plan. <sighs> yeah, Inkson is, uh, is like more God mode than he was in MI2. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny, uh, pretty funny. So, yeah, um, then I realized how boss stole the, the information off the syndicate desk, only re to reveal that he's the one that created the syndicate. That's why he wanted to steal off the information to cover it up. Okay, that twist does make sense. But the... Why chase the girl if you know that Benji has another copy? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Um, can't get over that plot hole. Another plot hole I can really, I can sort of, I can, you know, I'm sort of 50-50 on is that one of Ethan's team decides to backstab him to save Ethan's life and all of his friends. Well, Benji is gets kidnapped by the syndicate, so Benji. So he wants to, uh, so, um, so, um, Tom, which is Ace and Hunt, is, comes up with this plan to also get the information off the syndicate just by kidnapping the Chancellor of London, I guess. I mean, it is in London, so I'm assuming it's the Chancellor of London. They just called them, him the Chancellor. So, and so here's where it gets really confused. It gets more, a little more confusing. The guy that was backstabbing Ethan to save Ethan's life was in on Ethan's plan, even though the Ethan looked clearly shocked when he was disguising and shocked and confused that he actually was willing going to turn Ethan him 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 into the FBI. When he's disguised as someone, he clearly has a shock look, and he says, "I'm, hmm. okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm listening." And he, like, so next thing you know, he's like not shocked at all. He's always, and he, after this is after he takes off the flesh mask and tranquilizes the uh, everyone, including the chancellor. I guess it's also a mixture of. Also, a mixture of tranquilizer mixed with truth serum because everyone starts telling the truth. What and 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 Ethan gets sub ends up getting all the right answers. And then Alan Walden finds out, holy crap! Uh, holy crap! Ethan is not right. Who saved the world several times? Ethan's not. Ethan's not crazy or delusional. Who saved the world several times? And the reason why he wanted. The MIF to get shut down is because there's been so much collateral damage in the past uh, to the public. So, good reason to just want to get him shut down. I can, so, it doesn't make sense why um, he wants to shut the MIF down, which is the government Ethan works for, which is the which is the place which is what Ethan works for in his team. So, and uh, yeah. Then, um, after all that, the MIS gets renewed and reopened because the uh, El Baldwin set alive that I guess was created by Ethan Hunt and his team, or was this created by Al Baldwin's character? That's nothing. Al Baldwin is a really good uh, character in this, and he, 
he's definitely the highlight of the film. Him and the uh, Ethan's girlfriend. Which we don't really know what her name is at all. They just, she, what is, she's just uh, some girl. But we know Alec Baldwin's name and everyone else's name except the girl. Weird, huh? Um, so this is after they have taken down the leader of the Sinkin, the, all of the Sinkin's henchmen. And they trapped him in a little box. Kind of similar how, I guess, I guess it has knockout cast that because it just passes the guy out. Which is weird because it looks like the same exact smoke that Ethan was in uh, the box uh, when uh, the Sin King gave him this recording that he that posed as the MIF later to reveal that was the syndicate. So that wasn't this regular smoke like in past Mission Impossible films. Is that why Tom Cruise was fading like the like the bad guy was? It, it's just weird. Uh, it just doesn't make a lick of sense at all. It, yeah, because in the past Mission Impossible films, the smoke was this, well, smoke. That's why it says this table or this or this glasses or this message or would self-destruct. And it was even like that in the show. That's actually the one element they consistently got right. All the time in every Mission Impossible movie. But we're not really, except for this one. But because we don't know what kind of smoke that is that Ethan or the bad guy is inhaling. But we just know it's the same smoke. But yet they, for some reason, pass out. I'm just, I'm, I'm just a little confused by that, you know? So, is this a good movie? Yeah. But it's, it's not really... It's not a great movie. Yeah, I think I cover the plot as much. Um... So yeah, I do recommend watching this, Miss Cormier, but just don't, you might want not all of you at home, set your hypes to low expectations, and then you'll think, oh, this is movie's incredible. Mm. <laughs> I believe in Jesus. <laughs> I sound like someone actually squeezed me. It sounds like someone actually squeezed my sand cool for a second when I said that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the plane, uh, has really nothing to do with the following the plot movie. It's just, uh, this, this really, this cool action scene with Tom Cruise and, uh, on, hanging on to a plane. However, it's not like Fallout where the action scenes have the uh, biggest intense action scene, uh, the biggest intense scary action scene that come Tom Cruise does is helps in following the plot and working the plot. No, it's just the opening scene of the film that doesn't serve the plot of the film at all. You could cut that scene out and it wouldn't affect the plot at all. So you did great. You, you have Tom Cruise Oh, 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 yeah, Tom Cruise risks his life again, all not for the sake of the plot of the film. Well, what a disappointment. So, yeah, by the time I saw this one, my expectations to the Mission Impossible franchise weren't exactly high, like they were before when I saw Mission Impossible 3 and 1. They were kind of on the end level, and uh, I guess after seeing Fall, I I do have, oh, I do have some expectation back, 
but not but I feel like there's too much damage to be done that's been done to the franchise to consider it a like a kick ass spy espionage franchise. Because most of the time it doesn't feel like a spy's espionage. It just feels like a Michael Bay film most of the time. And look, I love Michael Bay films as more than anyone. But that's not what Mission Impossible was. It was more than that. It was like the last airbender, not the movie, the show, mixed with the uh, subtlety of an Alfred Hitchcock film. Everyone. It, it was like those two things were blended into a blender and got Mission Impossible, this weird and weird baby that's that subtle, but also can be dream, also can be very theatrical at the same time. And that's why I love the Mission Impossible series. Not the movies, the show. And consistent for every episode, for all seasons, it consistent kept that tone. I have no idea how they did it. It's just... And even the weekend episodes kept that tone, but... For some reason, Tom Cruise movies couldn't really always keep that tone. The only the times they could keep that tone is, well, most of the time in the first half of the film, of every Tom Cruise film. This is the first half could all keep that spice, espionage, subtle, taking their time tone that the show was well known for and gave it a new unique style. This, it feels like, doesn't feel like t a Tom Cruise style, because it, or it, neither does it feel like a Mission Impossible style. It just feels like a studio style, because they'll make it, because that's the most likely what's going to make the money. ka -ching. And, you know, that's just, you know, sad. I mean, I get it. Money's making making money is the most important thing. All when it comes to the studio, but uh, when it comes to me, it's that that's not good enough. I mean, it might be good enough for most people, uh, but you know, it, it has to be like the when I think it has to be what I think of when I hear the word mission impossible. Yeah, you know, and I'm, t I'm going to see I'm just tired of the team going rogue and Ethan going rogue or anyone going rogue that doesn't, that plays a part in the key story. It's just boring after a while. And sure, what if you do it every now and then, it's, it's, it's a refreshing, if you do it once in a while, but they do it all the time. And every once in a while, which is two times, They'll have the team by the book of the MFI. I think that's what it's called. The IMF. Mm. And yeah, I recommend this film, but don't get your hopes up when it comes to the Mission Possible movie franchise. You're just going to end up disappointing yourself like me. Give it a thumbs up and that's my review.